Welcome to Cadence and Church's Pray First podcast. Today we explore the power of fasting and prayer. Join us as we delve into a 46-day fast undertaken to deepen a connection with God. Our host and guest will share their personal insights and experiences, providing a unique perspective on this profound spiritual undertaking. Prepare to be captivated by stories of resilience, unwavering faith, and the extraordinary power of God. This multi-episode series will take you on a journey of self-discovery. Support our ministries at www.cadenceand.com. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Uh, Starting... Let's pray first, though. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Let's no, no, pray. no. You can have it recording. Record. Have it recording. You're prayer. Record? Yeah. Prayer? Yeah. Yeah. We're recording. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> this is day four of our fast. Day four of our 40 day fast for Lent. I'm not even keeping track. I'm afraid. <laughs> I have been counting every second. And, um, and you know, we're, we're, it's like our first time for both of us. Like we've never done it before. And we're kind of exploring it. We have parameters. We have highs and lows already. Um, and we thought day four would be, we just got moved. We wanted yeah. to record something. So we're going for it. But First and foremost, we're going to say a little prayer. Yeah. Yeah, you lead. I lead. Okay. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this moment in time to be here in fellowship with you and in fellowship with each other. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to grow more closely with you. And thank you just truly for putting this on our hearts and speaking with us and, and really being a collaborator with us during this time to really grow closer to you, to grow a closer understanding of you, and also grow a closer understanding of ourselves in alignment with you, Lord. Thank you for all the highs and the lows, all that you have in store for us. We know that you're with us and that you're for us, and we trust you. And we thank you for all the growth that you have for us and for helping us to be more like you and, and more in your image every day. Um, thank you just for the love that you fill our hearts with and in our families, in our workplace, in our environments, and everybody we come into contact with, Lord. Just thank you so much for this experience, and we love you so, so dearly, and we trust you. Would you like to say anything? Oh, dear God, thank you so much for another day. Thank you for walking with us. Thank you for moving our hearts to be able to move um, closer to you and to move closer to the path that you have for us. Um, Thank you for being with us during highs and lows, and thank you for just um, guiding our hearts towards what you want for us. Our hearts are open to you, God, and we dedicate this um, conversation, this discussion, this day, this fast to you, God, and we welcome more and more of you into our lives. Thank you for all that you've blessed us with and everything that you allow us to steward, knowing that um, you're really sort of with us in these moments to um, set us up for more and greater work, God, which we fully accept. Thank you for growing us, for evolving us, and for um, making us stronger in your light. And thank you for just how vividly you speak to us and um, how vividly you really guide us in our lives, God. We see you, we hear you, and we're so grateful for you. Thank you for this fellowship and thank you for uh, moving our hearts towards curiosity and moving our hearts towards things that are outside of our comfort zone, God. And we trust you with all of it and we dedicate all of it to you. Thank you for everything that you're doing and um, thank you for being with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good Amen. Job. All right. So day four. How about you give the people what they want and tell them what we're up to? <laughs> <laughs> also, I should have prayed this, but I'm also praying that God, that my words be like Ooh. what God has for me to share and what my words, his words are my words. Yeah. My words are his words. Yeah. However that works. Yeah. I just don't want them to be my words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. It is. Um, but yeah, like, so wow. like yeah fast um 40 days and um it's uh it's hard mm-hmm. i don't know you go you go first i'll tell we'll you I'm, I'm showing up as me like yeah. i'm like yeah. telling you like i just figure that this is going to be like a good um kind of like check-in just to say okay what have we been doing so far how has it been going like what are the parameters what am i experiencing and then i think through this and then also through the entire fast allows an opening for um, me to really kind of commune and grow closer in relationship with God of like removing a lot of like 
your word distraction, removing a lot of like kind of things that consume our time and space and efforts um, to be able to kind of like create like a more open vessel towards what he wants to do and, and, yeah. and like mm-hmm. say to us. And what's really incredible is I think like um, that daily devotional, Jesus Always, Jesus Calling, like the two books, like he'll constantly speak in those. He'll constantly talk, kind of like um, have these relevant messages that are tied to something that we're either struggling with, something that we're um, trying to understand better, some some sort of serendipity or synchronicity into like a theme. Harmony, maybe. Harmony <laughs> is a yeah. great word. And so I think in this 40 day fast, I think there are definitely things that are on my heart that I want guidance with. There are definitely things that I want discernment with, I want answers with, I want provision for. Um, But I think really more than anything, I think like all of it is like founded on growing growing closer in relationship to him and then also allowing maybe a little bit more calm and quiet to better understand what he's developing in me. And I think that I've already seen little pieces of it day four. Yeah. Like the light. That <laughs> has blown my mind yeah, awesome. since I feel like we heard about it yeah, last week. Yeah. Do you want to recap it a little bit? Yeah. Um, I, I kind of like where we're going to in terms of like what we're seeking from the fast and kind of starting there in the discussion. Mm-hmm. Like. And also that alignment of one, like what we're seeking, obviously, what we're kind of walking into it, thinking what we're going to receive. And, you know, I mentioned like that relationship with God and just really that discernment and, and, and growing deeper in that space, but also like opening up like our hearts, like what do you have for us to what do you have? What do you want to reveal to us, God? within this this fast and i think as we grow closer in relationship with our faith and with with christ just like in our personal relationship the closer we grow there's like a harmony that grows there because Mm -hmm. we better understand with god like i feel like in service last week like there was another like iteration of that light that we've it's been a common thing and it's been more and more profound i think that that light the idea of like being the light sometimes when like there's no light like there's an analogy that um uh pastor carrasco like shared like carly shared she you know she used an analogy of like driving in a car at nighttime for a distance with no lights, with, you know, a passenger and your passenger is telling you like, hey, maybe we should turn on the lights. Mm-hmm. And, and you're like, the driver's like, yeah, yeah, the lights are on, lights are on. And getting to the destination and realizing the lights aren't on. Mm-hmm. And so like <laughs> kind of that idea of like, you think you're like in the light or you're walking in the light or there's even reminders of the light. Mm-hmm. And still like getting to your destination, you're still like protected or provisioned, but you realize you weren't in the light or you didn't have the light and Ugh. it would have been easier or, you know, it can like be interpreted blinded different by way. your own perspective. Yeah. And being the light in the darkness. Like exactly. there is just so much in that. It's yeah. so deep. I mean, I, I don't know. I think I, for me, that one spoke to me so heavily. And I think I remember us walking out of there and it was like, we like flipped mm-hmm, a switch. Mm-hmm, yeah. Like we came out of it with like a very different perspective. And the themes of the light and the themes of like, of the relevance of, of God's word and scripture mm-hmm. in our devotionals and, you know, the themes of, you know, the light and just being in that harmony with what he has for us and we're like able to identify it yeah. and it's so relevant because i don't know i'm totally off on a bunch of different tangents That's but okay. um just in the scriptures that you know in our text thread that are shared um you know in our the sermons and everything so i think i think we are we have an idea of what we would like to achieve out of the fasts Mm -hmm. and also like some of these like practical achievements Mm -hmm. but also like god what do you have to show us here and i think he's like be the light be the light from the get-go which is so crazy to me 
And I, you know, you and I were talking about this. I feel like that's like a, that's a recurring message that I feel like he's spoken to me throughout my life. And I can see little fingerprints in it. Like I can see the best way that I think that we've described it, or I've been able to like kind of like just think about it is um, being stronger than your environment. The walk that you have in this world and the walk that you have on this earth isn't always going to be like in environments that are godly. Right. And then uh, there's like this, like almost push pull between like, what are you influenced by? Where are you sourcing your walk from? Like, where are you sourcing your, what are you getting influenced by? What moves you? What moves you? (laughs) And I think that that's what's so interesting about like the light. And there's this phrase that has stuck with me since then that's being strong in your light. And that light isn't you, that light is God. And all things that are good, all things that are heavenly, all things that are love, that are graceful, that are merciful, that are forgiving, that are like, that are just like all these really amazing things are all God. And anything that is not of that is not God. And so are you in an environment that's going to be, um, that's going to be, almost like over that's going to be influencing you out of that drag down or something or are you going to be strong in your light and strong in the aspects of like um jesus's influence where you can influence an environment based on how you walk and i just that just really struck a chord with me because i think that in that means that you're not getting swayed by any environment that you come across but you're rooted in god yeah and you can influence that environment and in scripture the idea of light is light illuminates darkness Mm -hmm. darkness does not like you know drown out the light yeah and so um that's john 1 verse 5 the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it yeah nice yeah yeah dropping scripture there it is (laughs) um i just think that there's so much in that and it also made me think from like a practical perspective a relation relationship perspective was um in some ways it made me think that's what it means to to put god first like to source yourself in him in any situation Versus getting influenced by friends, by family, by partners, by work, by environments, knowing that they're imperfect, knowing that um, the only thing that is like perfect and right and true is God and um, almost kind of like just making sure that you're just rooted and founded in that. And that just made me think that there's like you're prioritizing God in your walk in any environment does that make sense yeah i mean that's the foundation like like god is our rock like we're to build the house on the rock not on the sand and that's what that foundation like is what weathers the storm Mm -hmm. and then you know that light that we bring into the environment bring into like our families our 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 different seasons is what's supposed to overcome Mm -hmm. whatever darkness or whatever distraction it doesn't even have to be like we always at least my mind associates darkness with like evil Mm -hmm. and like you know this like you know clear villain but you know the darkness can just be distraction Mm -hmm. from like what god has for us Mm -hmm. in that time and sometimes you know it's the valley has us walking through we kind of spoke about this earlier to kind of like you know he allows it to help strengthen us because he has work for us you know, in the future yeah. or at the end of the valley. Um, and then being that light and following the light, like Jesus is that light. Like, I think it's like John eight twelve. We've been reading a lot of John. Um, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Mm-hmm. And that's like just being like rooted in, in him and ha- and understanding that he's a light and walking in him mm-hmm. like we are we are the light and not being able to be moved or waver waver is a great yeah, word yeah waver when like 
even our environment. I mean, I've shared with you like during past fasts Mm -hmm. um, where, you know, like spiritual fasts where like I'm I'm looking for this period of time to grow closer in God and to hear what he has for me and to kind of like take out some of these other distractions and other sources of pleasure. And um, even like a five day like, you know, water fast, Mm -hmm. water and coffee fast. Even my own family members, like, hey, it's your birthday week. Like, just break the fast. Like, God will <laughs> understand. Like, have your favorite cake. Have this. Have that. And, of course, like, my family loves me. Mm-hmm. And they want the best for me and everything. Um, and they weren't actually maliciously or evil. In my eyes, they weren't evil at all. Um, but what I was seeking and what God had for me and moved in my heart was to grow closer to him during that time. And... They were a distraction. It was a distraction of like, hey, like, just have this. It'll kind of like, you know, there's nothing wrong with eating, especially your birthday week and your birthday, like, meals and stuff, party. But it was a distraction. And they didn't know any better. They thought, that's a scary thing. Like, um, even our own selves, we can kind of get in our own way of what God has for us. And sometimes we can use things to get in our way of what God has for us. So I think like these fasts are really cool because it's like, okay, I'm going to remove this crutch or this thing that, you know, like comfort foods, like, oh my God, like I have so many comfort foods that when I'm stressed, I'm like, I want to do movie night. I want my popcorn. I want some pizza. Like, this is like the end of my week. Like, it's been a stressful week. I've been thinking about in and out the entire time. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and you know, that's like really interesting too, because it just makes me, um, it ties back to this idea of like God's voice, like, you know, being able to like decipher and discern God's voice above all other voices, above like your own sort of like voice trying to manipulate you into something off of people who care about you who think that they're doing you know supporting you or doing the right thing but really maybe it's not aligned like that that's hard oh it's so hard it's like a constant like you know constantly trying to like check in and understand and evaluate um so yeah i don't know i don't know a lot of voices so what other scriptures uh, have been speaking to you? Uh, okay, so I wrote down key scriptures that come to mind. <laughs> so um, there's some about the light, and you you said this one, but there's also this one. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. Psalm 18, verse 28. I thought that one was really Ooh, good. You got, what's the last part of that? You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. Ooh. Yeah. It's not even like we and ourselves turn our darkness into light. No. It's like my God right. turns my darkness into light. And it also ties back to what we were talking about, which was the idea of your your trials and your weaknesses and how those could be somehow connected. God, God is strong in your weakness. Mm-hmm. And there in your trials and tribulations. And it's a part of your story that leads you towards your purpose if you walk with him. And that last line about God turns my darkness into light is like made me think of that. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny that we were talking about that this morning or that yeah. somehow like came up. It's like it reminds you of Pastor Furtick when he um, he says, I think it was Furtick. I might be misquoting him. Um, in, in some of his sermons, he, he uses the analogy of like, God starts, he will finish, and he is everything. He is God above everything, yeah. like God above all. Right. And so everything, every outcome, our trials, our tribulations, the valleys we walk through, they have to be, they have to first pass through his hands. Mm-hmm. And so when we identify and we um, accept mm-hmm. that these things are passing through his hands, he is still there with us and so he's using these these trials to strengthen us and he's doing work in that Mm -hmm. it's a hard concept to grasp that god allow it's like the whole idea of like why god like why do you allow bad things to happen to good people Mm -hmm. um but the idea is that he puts in us the strength 
to endure some of the things that the world like come that comes to us through the world or comes through us even within ourselves sometimes we don't listen or sometimes we we act in our own strength Mm -hmm. and we put ourselves in situations but Mm -hmm. he's always there with us Mm -hmm. but ultimately he allows us to do those things he allows people to have free will and influence our lives positively or negatively but he's still there and it still passes through his hands and so he's still with us and he's still strengthening us and if we in our own strength and capacity attack the situation sometimes we're doing it within our own understanding own will Mm -hmm. and not what he had like his direction and what he has yeah So I think in identifying, like basically surrendering to him and saying like, all right, like this is bigger than me. I don't know how to solve this, but I know it's passing through your hands. So what will you have me do here? And you know what's so beautiful about that is there is this meeting him in it. It's not just all him because like the aspect of free will, like you can either decide to join him or not. And there's such a loving component to that and a duality to the relationship knowing that he's like your heavenly father who's always there and always available to you but he's waiting for you to receive him and open your heart to him is so incredible and him being so omnipotent like he could just he would have made that happen he was like you're gonna love me either way or i'm gonna make myself so known that you're not gonna be able to i'm not gonna make any room for faith but what he did is he allowed us that leap of faith, that love, yeah. that decisive love to meet him and be in relationship with him. And that is so like, um, it, there's an ebb and flow to it. And relationships are like a constant like nurturing and a building. And there's also this depth that can happen um, with, with that proper like nurturing and also the proper time. And I feel like that's what he's doing to us. I think like my walk has definitely been interesting over my adult life, like at least for like the last 15 years. And now more than ever, I feel like I hear him more vividly than ever. Now more than ever, I feel like I feel him closer to me. Now more than ever, I have more trust in him. Now more than ever, I also have a lot of fear in that trust. Yeah, yeah. But I I also do see his vividness. And I just think that it's just so interesting. And it makes me think that he does have something for us. He has something for all of us. He knows us so intimately. He knows us more than we know ourselves. He knows our path. He knows what's going to happen, where we've been. And to your point, he's anointed all of it. And our, our um, I don't want to say our work, but our option is to find alignment with him or not. Yeah. And in that alignment is decisive love and faith. And I think that's a really beautiful thing. And yeah. that is like another aspect heard, of light. I heard an analogy, um, I don't know, in the last day or so, but it's the like idea of like the river of like living water. Mm-hmm. And on one bank is like distraction. And on the other bank is, I'm trying to remember the other mm-hmm. bank. It's like distraction and then like something else and I'll have to come back to it. But the idea is like you stay on that living water like river. But if you like, you can look right and you can look left and it'll take you away from like the direction you're going down the river. But you look right and there's a distraction. You can like easily grasp onto that distraction. You like lose harmony. Mm -hmm. You get like pulled off onto the shore. And then the other side was like, it wasn't quite distraction. I think it was something less like negative. Um, But it's like that, that, you know, like how you're speaking as far as like that. Thank you for joining us on this extraordinary journey of faith and transformation. As we conclude this episode, we invite you to reflect on the profound power of fasting and prayer. Remember, this journey is not possible without the unwavering support of our generous donors. Your contributions enable us to continue providing life-changing services through our ministries. 
including Families in Crisis, Divorce Care for Kids, and The Fellowship Project. To learn more about our ministries and to make a donation today, please visit our website at www.cadenceand.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on future episodes. We invite you to join us on this extraordinary journey of faith and transformation. Thank you for listening and may God bless you.